What's up, everybody? I'm Joseph Arminio. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, security subsidies in proof of work mining. Now, if you look at a lot of the uh, blockchain emissions that are out there today, they were essentially designed before uh, the product hit market and you know uh, launched in a way that has some you know emission curve. Bitcoin is pretty famous with its halvings. And it does open up a question, you know, when the actual block reward gets low enough, what happens? You know, is there going to be the market value um, that's going to provide profitability for miners to continue to mine that chain? That's always the question. You know, mining is a business, and so if you want to be successful in proof of work, you need to offer the right environment and ultimately profit incentive for miners to uh, hop onto your chain and provide security. Now, Ergo is trying to do things a little bit different. You know, that starts with giving miners governance power. And hopefully, that attracts um, miners that are invested in the ecosystem, you know, beyond uh, just short time frames, because profitability tends to move around. Now, mining in Ergo does give miners the ability to adjust transaction fees. It, it gives them the ability to adjust block size, so potentially you can fit more transactions or scripts in a block. And it does give them the power to influence storage rent. Now, one thing that uh, has been an ongoing conversation since late last year, probably, is EIP-27. EIP-27 is essentially a reduction in the emissions contract that takes, I believe the initial dive is about 19% or 12 erg off of the initial emission contract, puts it into a re-emission contract and uses that to lengthen the amount of time that ergo is going to be distributed as, as a block reward. Uh, it does look like that's going to pass. Um, from what I've, you know, conversations I've had, it does appear that uh, every major pool is going to support that. Now, you know, I'm certainly someone that says, okay, well, let's not count our chickens before they hatch, right? But uh, that does look like it's going to move through. Now, hopefully there is some minor pools that say, hey, you know, maybe if I vote no, I'll pick up some hash rate, and it gives uh, miners the opportunity to oppose. That's important. Um, now, as we move into the future, I would like to see the mechanisms for voting uh, become more advanced. We did see the proof of vote um, framework from Gitblock, where they connected the hash rate that miners um, put into their pool, which is based on their payout. So they basically matched the ERG payout one to one with a voting token. And uh, miners were able to deposit that token into a contract and, in essence, vote yes or no. I was really proud to see the community come up with that. Um, you know, it's, it's nice to see individual miners have a small voice and, and to say. Now, having miners um, govern the ecosystem is relatively new. You know, if you look at uh, what is more, most profitable today anyway, it's Ethereum. Uh, part of the reason why Ethereum continues to be a profitable chain is number one, it's popular, but don't dismiss the value add of uh, minor extractable value. That does pad rewards and it does deliver value to pools that then they pass on to uh, their miners. So if I look at Ergo and I say, okay, well, that general setup works. Now, Certainly, uh, you know, MEV has well, it's some controversy, uh, but some of the things that uh, Ergo is bringing to market are a little bit controversial as well, uh, one of which is storage rent. Essentially, storage rent says, okay, we're going to take the blockchain history and we're going to uh, treat it somewhat like cloud computing to where if a UTXO is inactive for four years, um, it's going to be subject to a small tax. Now, that small tax 
is going to get paid to miners. And it does a couple of things. The first thing it does is it reduces the amount of dust that's stored on the network. Um, dust is essentially a UTXO that's holding such a small amount of ergo, it's not even economic to send as a transaction. It's kind of like uh, it's been broken down to such a small piece that uh, you know it's not really worth anything. And that allows miners to kind of smelt or collect uh, the erg dust and recycle it back into the ecosystem. So the beauty of that is that ergo uh, isn't lost. You can't really um, effectively you know, lock it or put it in a burn contract because eventually that burn contract will be subject to um, storage rent. Now, storage rent also gives miners the ability to take custody of assets that don't have the ability to pay rent. That's also pretty valuable. Uh, we have blockchains that are, uh, let's just say, saturated with native tokens, uh, NFTs, a lot of things that, you know, somebody somewhere creates, maybe just for fun. Who knows? Um, maybe it's a big project and, you know, the actual people involved disappear. That does tend to happen, unfortunately. And so you have a network that's cluttered with assets that have no value, right? Well, storage rent gives miners the ability to prune the network. Now, why is that important? Because it concentrates value per byte. Um, you know, it does help keep the chain size down a little bit, which then allows smaller actors to participate. You know, if the chain size gets too large, um, it may be on the reach of, let's say, the entry level miner. Now, custody in um, mining pools is going to open a question that's going to be really fascinating to see how it evolves. Uh, you know, it may be that uh, mining pools have, you know, they build kind of their own treasury of assets and they say, okay, well, maybe they're going to be a participant in DeFi. Uh, maybe they're going to use that in terms of creating efficiency in the market. Uh, maybe they're going to simply liquidate and pass on the rewards to miners. It's unclear. And the reality is it gives mining pools the ability to get creative. And what I hope to see in the future is mining pools say, okay, well, we have this storage rent value. How do we maximize the return? And how do we distribute that back to the miners that are mining Ergo? It's an open question. Uh, there's a lot of potential ways to create value. You know, it may be mining pools become their own little lending platform. Who knows? Uh, you know, we have a lot of smart contract functionality, so there's a lot of different ways uh, mining pools can deliver value and then pass that on to the miners to assist them in profitability. We also have a secondary mechanism of subsidizing miners that's going to be interesting to watch as it develops. Um, I do believe Gitblock is going to uh, make a video, and I think they already have at this point, uh, about you know how they can take their proof of vote tokens and uh, potentially connect other native assets into mining rewards to where if I create a project and I say, okay, well, I would like a fair proof of work launch, um, which it does actually have some uh, benefit because it, you know, is, is kind of following the uh, path that Ergo took. And uh, sometimes, you know, the mechanisms of selling tokens or, you know, ICOs or whatever, uh, you know, in various jurisdictions, it's just gray. And generally speaking, using the computational power of the network to unlock assets is kind of the standard, at least, that Bitcoin set. So I may want to say, okay, I'm going to take my tokens and I'm going to distribute them first to miners. Now, I could even get creative and uh, put in, you know, that smart contract that, you know, some allocation is going to get, uh, let's say, funding for a treasury for something else. That's what Ergo did. We had a 4% treasury that was unlocked 
uh, in part of our initial emissions. And, you know, the beauty of that is it's a way to bring a token to market that uses, you know, miners. So it kind of incentivizes security. It's fair. It's decentralized. And uh, the project itself can't rug because it gets the funding the same time as the miners do. There's no, um, you know, it's provably fair. Let's just say that. And uh, sometimes that's not always the case. Even with major blockchains, there have been a couple of instances where, you know, their actual um, allocation wasn't quite what they initially said. I'm not pointing fingers, but we all know. <laughs> anyway, um, that value proposition is powerful. Why? Because it assists in the profitability of miners. Um, we need to give tools to the mining pools so they can deliver value to our ecosystem and subsidize mining. And, you know, as this year progresses, uh, as we move into 2023, I think we're going to see some creative solutions coming about because uh, it is an advantage in proof of work. You know, it, they that something similar does exist. You know, we do have airdrops, right? But what's to stop me as a user from saying I'm going to go into a wallet and I'm going to create 50 addresses and I'm going to sign them all up for the airdrop. It happens all the time. You know, uh, having the token allocation actually connected to work is a lot harder to fake. Um, now, one thing that may require is a certain level of trust in mining pools. But, you know, it's one of those things, if they can be a good actor, and deliver value to their miners, guess what? They're gonna attract miners. You know, so it's kind of within their incentive to help uh, deliver value. So we'll see, I'm, I'm really excited to see uh, how that progresses. It's always a big question that I get asked, you know, what's gonna happen when, you know, Ethereum leaves proof of work? I have no idea, I have no idea when that's gonna happen. I'm not even sure if it's known in house, you know, I'm, I know the date's been rescheduled a few times. Let's just say that. So, we'll see. Um, you know, I don't think that that is actually too critical in terms of our success. I think there's a lot to learn from, from looking at different projects and proof of work and what has worked and what hasn't. And uh, I think that history shows that when you deliver value... To pools and they can then redistribute that to miners miners are happy now add governance on top of that and i think uh you know long term hopefully we can get uh quite a nice mining community together i know we already do but uh, i'd like to see that grow and the security of the network um you know grow with the development on top so we'll see it's a big challenge but uh it's something that, you know, looking at our community, uh, looking at GitBlock, looking at the developers, that's the goal. So I hope everybody had a wonderful uh, security summit. I do know there's going to be a quiz afterwards. And the quiz is going to have uh, some winners that are going to get paid ergo. <laughs> to be honest, I don't exactly know the details of that, but I was told, hey, wrap it up and you know, say something about our contest. So go win some Ergo, everybody. Have a good one.